Okay guys, welcome to a Tips in 10 browsewear video. And this is about attic shoes and changing your colorways. So this is Gabrielle. She's one of the new parametric avatars. And we're just gonna go ahead and use her to um, <clears throat> change some of her measurements. And then we're gonna position her for high heel shoes. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at these measurements. One of the things that I love about browsewear is that you can actually give her a uh, realistic cup size. So if you adjust some of the, the bust measurements, you can actually get a uh, very close bust simulation for uh, bra sizing. So we're just gonna go ahead and change some of her parameters. We've already put her into the high heel pose and that's just zero to one for high heels. I'm gonna change her shoulder. I uh, made a little typo there. But um, yeah, we're gonna just change her shoulder. I'm gonna give her a better bust to under bust ratio so that I could get a better cup size. Uh, also, if you change the apex, that will also help you to achieve the cup size. So if you change the apex, this apex distance, um, you can kind of see that she starts to get a roundness in the cup, which is good for bras and swim. And that's what I usually work on. So I wanted to show you guys that. Um, I feel like sometimes the posterior is a little bit too high. So we're just going to, um, change the width at least, but the shape is pretty rounded in the back, which is kind of a curvy shape. So I would say Gabrielle, uh, all of the new parametric avatars have pretty much a curvy shape. So. Let's go ahead and talk about these heels. So now we've put her into the high heel pose and I'm just gonna select a shoes. It's gonna say, where do you wanna fit these shoes now? And I'll say yes. And here is the drama. You have to go ahead and use the gizmo in your 3D window to fit the shoes. It can take a little bit of maneuvering. They don't just snap on like in some other programs but you have to actually go ahead and manipulate them to be uh, aligned with the ankle, aligned with the heel, aligned with the um, <clears throat> the toes and the, uh, the width of the shoe, because now you've already, you might've changed her shoe width, you might've changed her um, shoe size or something like that. So you kind of have the option to uh, still utilize the parametric measurements, but you can also go ahead and fit the shoes to the avatar that you've selected. Uh, the same thing works for plus, or if you're doing another size avatar, you still have the opportunity to go ahead and customize the fit of the shoe. Does it take a while? Yes. Is it something that I suggest you do for your avatars separately from building garments? Yes, why do I say yes to that? It's because it kind of takes away from having to uh, go ahead and make a garment. It takes a little bit to get it to, um, I don't wanna say a perfect thing because I kind of feel like it's not gonna be perfect. So you can get it to as close as possible. Some people are really good at it, nudging and nudging and lifting up and nudging and pushing back and nudging, but Take a session of just putting shoes on your favorite avatar, on your sized avatar, on whatever avatar you're using. Uh, make it a project. Why? Because it can kind of take away from actually the garment making part of, of your project. So go ahead and get those shoes on. And once they're on, good news is you can use them in any simulation with that avatar. So I can go ahead and position her and put her in a pose and those shoes will go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and change some of these colorways now, but the shoes will be there for her for this avatar. So usually when you clone a, um, a colorway in your colorway window, you can go ahead and start adding uh, various colors and then once you're in that colorway once the colorway is selected you can go ahead and change your fabric uh, overlay colors or recolor your fabric the way that you want it now the colors colorization does not take away from the uh, textures of the fabric so if you just uh, address the color of the fabric in your diffuse section <clears throat> Um, if you just address the color 
then you'll still have all of your textures that go along with the fabric. So really you're recoloring everything. You can go ahead and add some, uh, some more colorways and test out different versions. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Just save often, do not depend on uh, browseware to save for you. Make sure you save often. But I'm just gonna fix the bottom hem. I'm gonna go ahead and once it's saved, it kind of snaps back on. Excuse me. <clears throat> and we're just gonna render it out and then I'm gonna add some colorways. I'm gonna change the hues. And then we're gonna render this out. One thing I will say um, is for knits, sometimes you're working with knits, you can go ahead in the fabric physics and change the tension of the knit. A lot of people kind of just depend on adjusting the pattern piece, but you can change the tension as well. So then we're gonna get back to uh, our colorway after I change the tension on the bottom. And uh, we're just gonna make a blue and a brown colorway like you saw in the beginning but you select the colorway and then you're able to go ahead into uh, the different color hues I just stuck to uh, adjusting the hues and not really like changing the whole colorway so you know it is a different color um, and I suggest after you get to your colorways once you get them done then you go ahead and save your snapshot because that snapshot will save for all colorways if you save the snapshot before colorways and change the colorways you may have issues there so just make sure you're always saving your uh, your snapshot as final and just arrange them to where you need it so you can go ahead and delete I have a lot of uh, a lot of uh, snapshots in there that I don't need but I want to talk about render settings real quick I'm using the ray trace render in blender and if you saw there I have my iterations um, at 1500 now that's really high considering I'm using blender um, 3.0 like I updated in my parameters to blender 3.0 which is out now and basically um, I'm just gonna do a multi-color colorway uh, setup. So you call that the combination into one file. I like the way that looks, and it's uh, gonna be a high-res render in Blender, and I'm gonna show that to you in just a second. Um, but if you click on, right now it's on transparent, if you go ahead and click on the HDRI, the HDRI is not gonna show up. Um, it will show up in the render, however. So you'll see in the render that it does show up. And I'm gonna go ahead and save that. It's giving me a little error at the bottom, but that's that. And once it comes on, you have your wonderful ray traced high resolution render. So like I said, I have a uh, 3080 graphics card, uh, an i7, Windows um, PC and this took about less than a minute uh, using Blender 3.0 and as you can see the HDR is in the background the quality is pretty good um, I want to say good good because uh, I can see it on my full screen and it looks pretty clear so um, if you want a higher quality, you can increase increase the iterations. With the Blender 3.0, it will go very fast. You won't be waiting too long for renders, so you can get a good, good, good quality. And that is your tips and 10 for Browseware, guys. Happy 2022, and I'll be back for more. Thanks again.